Dr. Sunetra Gupta is with us, Professor of Theoretical Epidemiology at the University of Oxford. Thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. Um, let's talk about the, the vaccines and the boosters and comparing it um, and contrasting it with the va vaccine for the flu, etc. So all these things are what people are having to contend with at the moment. Break it down for us. What should we be thinking about? Well, first of all, we should be thinking about what the vaccine actually delivers. And what we've done continuously uh, throughout the course of this pandemic is take some of the wonderful tools that we have and push them to do what they can't do. So we have, for example, mathematical models, which are fantastic conceptual tools, and they've been pushed beyond their capacity to do what they can't do, which is to predict how many cases there'll be and how many deaths there'll be. We have vaccines which are meant to protect against disease and death amongst those who are vulnerable to those conditions. And instead, we've been pushing them to do what they can't do, which is protect against transmission. Once you take on board the fact that vaccines are supposed to protect against severe disease and death, and this was recognized by many people at the outset, including Kate Bingham, who said, you know, we'll vaccinate everyone over 50, and then that's it, we've done our job. And the vaccines have done their job. They've been superlative in doing their job uh, so far and we're protecting people against severe disease and death. They were never meant to be used to stop transmission or so to allow people in particular settings to uh, make them risk free. So it is really not logical to use vaccines to protect other people. The vaccine protects you, um, which if you're vulnerable is really a very, very valuable okay. thing. What I we really that. should be thinking, sorry, yes, go ahead. Okay, so Professor, I get that. So from what you're saying, can I extrapolate from that that you don't think that NHS and care workers need to have vaccines unless they want to? You don't think they should be forced to? I don't think they should be forced to on the understanding, but, simply because this vaccine does not prevent transmission. So if you just think of the logic of it, what is the point of requiring a vaccine to protect others if that vaccine does not durably prevent onward transmission of a virus? So, I mean, obviously there are all sorts of ethical and political issues surrounding this, but we can peel it right back to the logic. And the logic, is simply not there. It's illogical to force a vaccine upon people in the hope that you can reduce the transmission of disease. And we've seen that. It's been borne out, for example, in Israel, where cases are rising despite vaaccination. The okay. good news is that provided you've protected those who are vulnerable to disease and death, we don't need to worry. So we are unnecessarily inflicting upon ourselves this worry that we will be transmitting the virus to someone Got who's it. going to die. Okay, so should 12 year olds be vaccinated? I absolutely do not think that is um, logical at any level. I mean, leave alone the ethics of um, using 12 year olds as barriers for infection uh, for the community. The fundamental, the bottom line is that these vaccines do not prevent transmission. So these vaccines do not benefit. In the case of a 12 year old, it benefits neither the individual who is not at risk of severe disease and death, um, nor does it benefit the community. So all we're left with is a risk of vaccination. To ask children to bear that risk to me is just simply uh, unacceptable. And further than that, we had the health secretary on the programme uh, yesterday morning, and he was saying that 12 year olds should be able to override uh, their anti-vax uh, parents if they wanted to have the jab. Quick thought on that before I let you go. Well, I find that very, very difficult um, to understand. Mostly we don't leave such decisions to 12 year olds. And, um, you know, we're not, if we were in a situation where there was a huge medical emergency, 12 year olds were dying in droves and we had to roll this out, um, we might consider such an, an extraordinary measure. But in, under these circumstances where the vaccine is being offered to 12 year olds to protect the community, um, you know, given that most people are struggling with that concept, the idea that a 12 year old would immediately be able to make a rational decision 
um, given all the facts, it is, is really kind of um, difficult to understand. Professor, I'm so sorry, we are out of time, but absolutely fascinating. Thanks for clearing up some of those uh, subjects for us here on Sky News.